Hi, I'm Brian Sheets with American Rifleman Magazine, and this week we've got a really classic handgun to look at. This is the Browning High Power, probably familiar to a lot of you. This is a gun that's been around since 1935. FN's chief designer, Diodone Saiv, who was essentially John Browning's protege at the FN plant in Liège, Belgium, finished the design of this gun. And at the time, it was really groundbreaking because, for one thing, it had a 13 round double stack magazine and that was quite quite a bit more capacity than pistols had at that time but it was in nine millimeter luger of course a classic cartridge 13 rounds single action uh, a, a system essentially the same as the uh, browning 1911 in, in fundamental operating uh, characteristic but this gun accomplished it's lockup of the barrel a little differently, and actually the gun is sort of a simplified version of the, of the uh, 1911. But the high power had a, a standard uh, one side magazine release that's a push button. This particular example is a late model gun. This gun's only about three years old, and I, I've added the, the Hogue stocks here, but uh, it has the finish that was proven pretty popular over the years on some of the military guns, which is a sort of a polymer uh, paint surface on top of parkerizing, so it's very durable. But uh, all in all, this, this particular new gun has the uh, spur-type hammer. It has a set of sights that have white vertical bars on them. Probably the biggest change from the older models is that this has a bilateral safety control and it has enough extension on the control that in this case you can actually get the safety to engage and disengage without an inordinate amount of pressure. And one thing that you'll notice about the high power is that when the magazine is out and the hammer is back, this gun's been cleared and checked, you cannot pull the trigger. So it does have a magazine disconnect. Once the mag is in there, you can lower the hammer on the gun, and that's the new gun. The old gun that I have here is a 1962 vintage high power, uh, still uh, made in Belgium at that time, of course. Uh, in those days, the safety was a, a really minimal control and was uh, one of the points that people panned the gun about, uh, the safety just being a little hard to manipulate. And in this case, also this, this gun has a rowel style hammer. The other interesting thing about this gun is that you can just see there at the end the uh, internal extractor, which was just like a 1911, and that's how the guns were in the old days. Later on, they went with the external extractor here that's sort of machined into the side of the slide. But the high power, that's all the technical stuff. 13 round capacity, nine millimeter. Over the years, the high power proved really durable uh, with a lot of the world's militaries. It was a service pistol, and yet, it's so trim and it's so classy in its lines, a lot of people really saw it as a concealed carry pistol. So it's, it's a classic in both those regards. And one of the things that it really has going for it is that it's probably one of the best pointing pistol that you'll ever pick up. Your hand just fits into that, that undercut on the back strap and just really grabs a hold of that thing and, and sort of just becomes one with it. It points really beautifully. So the Browning High Power was another vestige of the genius of John Browning. Uh, it was also combined with the man who brought us uh, the FNFAL uh, rifle. So it, it really has a lot of great gun designer DNA behind it. So there you have it, 80 years plus uh, from the time it first came out, the Browning High Power is still a classic. Yeah, it's overshadowed by the polymer pistols these days, but if you want an all-metal pistol that fits the hand beautifully, is a classic and has unfailing reliability and pretty nice magazine capacity, even by today's standards, the high power fits the bill. High powers are still brought into the United States by Browning Arms Company in Morgan, Utah. You can visit their site at browning.com. And for more reviews of classics like this and modern guns, visit AmericanRifleman.org.